Yo, what's up, guys? Quizzy the Games. Welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. Uh, if I sound congested, I think I got a cold. I don't know what it is. Sorry about that. But anyways, we're back with a brand new video on the channel. Uh, there are bigger videos coming, but I really want to get this Nomura interview out the way. Because uh, he had an interview in Young Jump two days ago from this video uploading. I feel like people are like... I feel like people are being a little too doomery, not really reading what he's saying. We're not really thinking into a bigger picture about what he's saying. And I kind of want to give my perspective because I feel like I'm the Tetsu Nomura number one guy, you know, self-proclaimed, of course. Uh, but I really feel like people are reading this wrong and they're not really understanding what he's trying to say. And I could be looking too deep into it, but you know, that's okay. I want to be, I want to be someone who looks too deep into things and really gets into the mind of the creator. Uh, so let's get into the interview and talk about the answers. Some answers are missing on this interview, by the way. I don't know why, but I have another translation, another tab that I go into what they left out. Many of your works have complex settings, so how do you manage to bring them all together for when you have to record the voice lines? Honestly, I don't think they understand e everything either of the day of recording. When the staff are in myself explain the setting and the characters with the voice actors in recording, they sometimes ask me to confirm if it's okay to do it like that. There are times when I have to say, no, it's not okay. But there's no way around it because I'm the one who understands the parts of the characters that haven't been drawn. So I'm the only one who could think about the complex story and all the different directions that you could go. On the other hand, I also actually encourage the staff to question and point things out to me. So what I like about this is that it really shows how much of an art tour he is. And you know, it can be a problem when the staff members are able to tell the people recording what this is going on, the settings and stuff like that. But it's really cool that he has this all in his head. Or in the next question, he has it in a book. And he has a so much in-depth world that he's written down and characters and settings and their life and stuff like that and the stories he wants to tell and it really shows how much of a creative he is and i really really like that and i think that's why he's one of the best creators out there right now because he goes into the smaller details that people just aren't going to get unless they go to him and it's really cool that he's able to do that because his interpretation or not interpretation what he's trying to say is precise and to a point. You know, obviously a lot of creators are like that, but I feel like a lot of artists, uh, specifically, there's a specific type of artist that he is that really, really is able to go in depth with that stuff. Is there something like a setting reference book? I have some things that I personally write down to remember, including periods that are not depicted. So I assume like in the past or flashback stuff that, you know, would develop those characters um, but that we're well, not develop, but explain more about those characters that aren't put into the games um, that he has down and their footsteps leading to them, you know, footsteps to lead to where they are as people currently and their future selves. So you don't share that information? Of course not. I do that to myself. However, I do make sure the staff knows what they need to know by writing setting explanations all at once in the middle of the scenario. So obviously he doesn't keep it all to himself, but he only uses it when he needs the staff to really know when they're writing or developing a certain part of the game, which I really like because it means that you're never bored working with Tessie Nomura. There's no clear cut answer to anything, right? There's no clear single way to do this thing or tell the story. You, you have part of the story, he comes in and helps you finish the rest and you're like, oh, okay. That's what, that's what comes up to me. That's how it comes up. And we know it doesn't, that doesn't, we know the auteur mentality that he has is not an instrument to the game development because after the least Final Fantasy 15, when people were like, oh, Tessie Nomura Tessi is a bad developer, uh, thank God Hajime Tsubata took over so 15 can be out. Um, people who worked on the game before Hajime Tsubata took over and no more left for Final Fantasy 7 Remake um, have said that he was not a problem. He was not the problem. He was not the problem with the game. And he's not the reason why it didn't come out. There's actually multiple things stating why it didn't come out. But, you know, people always got to blame, blame my dude um, on why it got canceled, even though it's not the case. And we can see here that it probably is awesome to work for this guy. And the people who worked on 15, you know, talked about this after the game released, um, probably had a good time too. You know, people could say, oh, but, you know, they probably lied or whatever. You know, they, they make him look good, but why would they have to do that, you know? Um, especially people who don't work at the company anymore. They didn't work at the company, the guy who did it. He stopped working at uh, Square Enix after Final Fantasy XV came out. In the game of our series, there are many foreshadowing elements that span the series, so how do you keep up, keep track of those? As I, mentioned, as, I, as I mentioned previously, I write a lot in my notes. 
but I also make sure the staff remembers and like watching YouTube videos. So I watch playthroughs, reviews on YouTube. Basically, rather than looking back at my notes, I make sure the staff remembers what happened in the past titles. What I really like about this, um, in another take I went out rambling about this, uh, and I'll go rambling about it again, is that if you've made a Kingdom Hearts video in the past, you probably have been seen by Tetsuya Nomura or other people. And a lot of people have interpreted this as saying it's only the Japanese YouTube channel he watches, but I don't think that's true. And also, he does mention in another translation that he watches their videos, which is really cool. Um, and I think it's not just Japanese fans, I think it's English fans too. Because Yoshi P, Hamaguchi, Yoshiki Tase, la yada yada, all the people that you know of Square Enix, the big names, they've seen it multiple times that they watch English fandom stuff. And uh, Yoshi P, for example, has people lurking in streams, uh, certain streams for Final Fantasy XIV. So I feel like Tetsuya Nomura is the exact same. He said, I watch playthroughs and reviews. Obviously, it's probably a bunch of people that, we, you know, people that, you know, it could be you. It could be you watching this video if you make YouTube videos. I don't think the, you know, view count probably matters or the subscribe count probably matters. You've probably seen a bunch just, you know, watch people's stuff on Kingdom Hearts. And I think that's cool. I really think that's cool. And I'm hoping that they've done it for my videos on Final Seven Remake, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Um, and also... It tells me that even if you like a game, you don't like a game, you love a game, you have to be respectful to develop. Because there are people too, they spend so long making these games for us. Even back in the day, one or two years of non-stop work to make these games. And now the dev times are longer, they're spending five, six years making these games, first playing them out, then developing them and putting their life, their blood, their sweat and tears into making these games that we can play. If you don't like them, you know, tell them in a respectful way what you don't like, and they can improve on it. Do like it, you know, say why you like it, but don't like overly, if you like it or love it, I mean, don't just overly praise literally everything to the point where they can't really understand what you love. You gotta explain it in complete detail. And, you know, stuff like that is why we have reaction commands back. People were like, well, we missed reaction commands, and we want them back. So they brought them back. It was the memoirs they did it himself. The same reason why reaction commands were removed back in the day, because a lot of people who had voices, like reviewers and stuff like that, not us, because we were kids playing the game. And now that we have so many ways to tell developers how we like their games or what we don't like, we got to do it in the best, the best, most concise, mature possible way. Even if you're a teenager, you know, if you're a teenager. And you're listening to this if you're a doll if you're if you're like 50 or something or whatever how old are you playing these games you know they they listen they they listen and they take that information in and even if you don't like it be respectful you know even if you love it talk about it in a great in a way that's understandable you know just you we got we got to communicate well and you know communication is key when it comes to being a fan of these things because these people are people too they're not machines they're people making these games and they're doing it out of the love of the craft they love making these games and i'm so glad tessie nomura is listening to us because i think it's great i think it's awesome that him and his team are listening to us and i'm excited to see what they do with what we've said and what we want in the future Kingdom Hearts because I'm excited because of that. I'm ex super excited. This year, Kingdom Hearts Missing Link is also scheduled for release on mobile devices. Do you have any concerns that developing important stories for apps and portable games, you will end up with more PLAs who cannot keep up with the story? Honestly, I do. That's why we're developing a story that takes place in a time frame that's much earlier than Kingdom Hearts timeline on consoles. However, as people as people say, the newly announced Kingdom Hearts is Kingdom Hearts 4, and we're like Kingdom Hearts 13. I've said something like that before. I've said it multiple times. I'm like, you know, Kingdom Hearts 3 is actually Kingdom Hearts 7, actually. Um, or Kingdom Hearts, is Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts 3 is Kingdom Hearts 10, actually. Um, and you guys are just mad because you know, Kingdom Hearts 3 you know, it took forever, but it will take forever. As there are actual connections, even with non number titles, and I think that will allow people to enjoy the series even more deeply. Which, you know, is great because um, he, he, he knows that if you've been keeping up for a long time, you'll enjoy the games a lot more because you're invested. You'll enjoy four and Miss Link a lot more because you're invested. And let me tell you, I'm obsessed, man. I'm obsessed with every little piece of news. I'm, I'm there on Miss Link day one. I'm there day one, man. For example, as a new experience, experiment, sorry, we have had staff who have not been involved in the Kingdom Hearts series before participating in the scenario. I assume he's talking about both because we know Kingdom Hearts 4 has new people. It's a three-person writing team, including him, and he's editing it at the end. Um, of course, I will be editing in the end, but I don't think it's positioned as a work that needs to be done in the sense that the writer who has never been in the Kingdom Hearts series is creating a new base. 
I think they translated that really badly. I'm pretty sure he's saying that it's not being positioned as a work that needs to be done in the sense of you had to be on the Wars before and it's being done in the sense that you're new to this, but you can still create something with what I've made before. I think that's what they're trying to say. This is it's difficult to catch with a long running manga series from the very first title. The Kingdom Hearts series has many tales that seem to be seem to have the same problem. What are your thoughts in regards to new fans that might try playing this series? That's what I like to know. <laughs> as mentioned earlier, I'm thinking of missing Link in Kingdom Hearts 4 as a kind of reset. I felt like I finished with Kingdom Hearts 3 and wanted to start again, so I bought a new Riders and even changed the logo to make it easier for people to get involved in. Again, soft reboot, like we said earlier. Um, which I really am excited for, see what Kingdom Hearts 4 as a soft reboot does, because I'm wondering how much it will change Kingdom Hearts as, you know, a story. It will have different pacing from the Kingdom Hearts post 2. Will it be similar to Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 times of pacing? Or will it be like Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop, you know, sorry, Birth of Sleep to Dream Drop? Or 358 to Dream Drop, sorry. Or 358 to 3, I mean, I'm sorry, I keep getting confused. There's so many games, so many games that I love playing. Or will it have a new type of pacing that isn't like that? Because we do know. According to two years ago, um, after the reveal, like a month after the reveal with the Game Informer interview, Tetsuya Nomura said that Quadratum is the hub world. And I'm very curious at how that will affect the storytelling. And I'm very excited to see how that works because I really, really, really want to see that. Um, so hopefully we get some news about that soon. Hopefully we get the Game Awards that we see in Hearts 4 for the first time again. Um, I think it'll be a good place to have it uh, since Nomura will probably, probably be there. And Jeff, my man's Keely, visited Square Enix Japan uh, this year, this summer, and I assume it had to do with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, but also, I'm thinking Kingdom Hearts 4. I'm thinking Kingdom Hearts 4. I really am. Okay, these two were not, these two were not on the Cage Insider, or Cage 13. These two were not on the Cage 13 website, so I'm going to a different website to get these translations. So here we go. So that's what the logo change meant. Those who know the Kingdom Hearts 3 ending, this is Namora, will understand that the reason the story ended like that was to reset the start up to that point. So 4 should be easier to get into the pre than the previous games. I think that if people who like Kingdom Hearts touch it, they'll feel like, oh, this is it. But we're making it with the hope that new people will be able to play. And again, soft reboot, similar to, I assume, God of War 2018. Probably a little more connected than 2018 was, because 2018 is connected, but Kingdom Hearts is an ongoing story, and I assume Kingdom Hearts... Um, for Verimrex 6 and well, I'll talk about that later. Um, Kingdom Hearts 4, 5, and 6 and Verimrex will all still be connected in, to the original Dark Seeker saga in some way. Um, so we'll see about that. I'm expecting it to be easier for people to get into without having to go back. You said in a previous interview that in Kingdom Hearts 4 you spent a lot of time in Quadratum. I feel similar to Shibuya. What was your intention to bring a more realistic, in a more realistic setting to a work that is a complete fantasy world? There are several reasons. But I like worldviews that are slightly different from a possible reality, rather than ones that are too false. It's the same with movies, but if the world is too zero-based, medieval fantasy, I can't really get into it. I feel like I'm dreaming in settings that are based in Shibuya, but not the real Shibuya. Rather than complete fantasy, I think the unrealistic with the reality fits the fantasy view well. So obviously, this is his type of fantasy. We've seen it before. We've seen it before Kingdom Hearts was even a thing. We play Final Fantasy VII, and obviously that's not just his game, it's multiple people's game. I try not to blah blah, but he's a very heavy influence on Final Fantasy VII, and we know this because of many of you, many interviews throughout the years. And Final Fantasy VIII was another big Nomura project. Final Fantasy X, another big Nomura involved project that he was with in. Kingdom Hearts has a lot of outside of Disney. Uh, modern settings like Destiny Islands, Twilight Town, the world that never was. You know, it's always, even though it's a complete fantasy world, it's set in Disney. A lot of Disney magic. There's still a lot of modern day stuff in Kingdom Hearts. And that's just his type of a re a fantasy world. And I really like that because I prefer semi-realistic fantasies too. I love me, like, you know, JJK and Tokyo Ghoul. And also I love me some, you know, J dramas or um, a thing I really enjoy watching, Tokusatsu, like Kamen Rider. I really like those things because they're set in real life, but not in real life. It's a, a fantasy based on reality. Final Fantasy 15, which, you know, if he had done that, I think I would have liked it more. 15's a fine game. I've accepted that at the point. But 15's problem for me was that, even though it was set in modern day, 
there was not a lot of modern stuff in it to explore, and it was mostly like desert and stuff, and you didn't really go to cities and stuff like that, or, or stay in locations that were, you know, modern day in some way, which I was really hoping that game would do. Like Final Fantasy VIII, for example. Even in manga, for example, Tokyo Ghoul set in Tokyo, and Jujutsu Kaisen is set in Shibuya. There are maybe many manga readers and game players who like fantasy that's close to reality. That's probably true. I think it's easy to empathize with. I think it's easy to empathize with. Also, I thought that Medieval 5 fantasy works have always been good because there's many people who make them even if I don't make them. Because yeah, Medieval fantasy has been around since forever. Whenever, you know, when, when was Tolkien writing the Cimmerillion and Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit? Whenever he wrote those. And probably before that. It was just easier for people to make and it's such a, it's such a common thing that there's so many good ones and you don't really need he, he feels the need that he doesn't really need to be able, have to do that to be able to make a good fantasy story is to be like them uh you know which i think is true i think a lot of stories in uh, modern day or contemporary or urban fantasies uh are cool because it's not just a high fantasy medieval story and i like me some high fantasy medieval stories don't get me wrong but i just love love the modern day stuff i love bleach i love jujutsu kaisen I love freaking. I love Beelzebub. You guys probably don't know what that is. That's all said in modern day. Lots of manga that said modern day, and it's really cool. I really love contemporary settings. I released a work, it should be your cult, the world, the world is Wonderful, aka The World Ends With You, 2007. And recently, recently, a lot of. A lot of meh. And recently, a lot of works said in Shibuya have been released. Everyone has come to Shibuya. It seems like everyone has come to Shibuya, which I really like because. Um, it, it's, it feels like he's saying, I was like one of the first ones, guys. I was like, I was here first, you know what I mean? I was one of the, I was, I was one of the pioneers. Obviously, he wasn't the pioneer, but, you know, I'm gonna let him have it, because that's my boy, that's my boy, that's my goat. He's him, man. I'm gonna let him have that one. I'm gonna let him have that one, for sure, for sure, for sure. At the beginning of Kingdom Hearts, there's a monologue that goes, I've been having these weird thoughts lately. Like, is any of it real or not? What does that mean? So, in another interview, he mentions that he's he plans every game, uh, two games ahead from when he releases game so but the phrase i've been here having these weird thoughts lately um has been a thing that he's wanted to use in a meaningful way since the very beginning and quadratum didn't exist at the time but quadratum uh is the idea that involves those words that he's been able to use that he's going to use that he's been preparing for since 20 years ago which i think is really cool I think um, that it probably was going to use Insomnia in some way before, you know, he lost uh, Verum, uh, Versus 13. Um, and now Quadratum is the replacement. Um, he says there is no connection, but I think there was. Um, there was, but not anymore, uh, in my opinion. So, you know. So it was actually a fortune that took 20 years. Then you see a future where the Kingdom Hearts series will be completed. If it isn't a dream, then I only have a few years left until I retire. And it's looking like, will I retire or will I finish the series first? However, I'm making Kingdom Hearts 4 with the intention of it being the story that leads to the conclusion of the series of Kingdom Hearts. So, a lot of people are taking this as a bad thing, but I want to give a just different perspective. Um, well, two, it, if he finishes it, if he finishes it before he retires, I'll be happy. I I'll be happy about that. That's my only hope. But also, I don't think he'll retire. I I think he's like a Sakaguchi or a Hayao Miyazaki, where they create they say they retire but they continue to create and you know your opinion on the on this later stuff you know like the boy and the heron or fantasia uh you know you know your opinion on them may vary i don't really like the boy and the heron but i, I think fantasia is pretty cool um and i think tomorrow we'll keep creating stuff even if it's not kingdom hearts if it's not final fantasy if he goes on to you know to do whatever he wants and goes to a different company and they hire him i think he'll still create even after you leave square Enix. i think he'll create maybe they'll get him back because someone at the company loves working with uh, Tashina more like Hamaguchi or something. And I think because of that, he will create until he's truly, you know, gone. Um, and I could be wrong. I could be, he could be that he's he's not, you know, that he wants to just rest. He just wants to be done. But I really do think there's more in him than people think. He's 53 year old. He's 53 years old, you know, sure. But I don't think that's the end of it when he reaches 60. I think he's got a lot more in them, a lot more in him than other people do. And I think people should, you know, 
be more optimistic and not in the way of like oh well, he has to create because i love him if he leaves i'm gonna stop love video games or whatever i just think he's a creative and creators want to create and i have i don't think creators want to stop creating he's an auteur and auteurs always want to make stuff because that creative bone in your body will always want to do things that's how i see it i could be wrong but that's how i see it thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope you guys have a great rest of your day and my new two new videos are coming uh big one two big ones and i hope you guys are excited for those whenever they release hopefully soon uh but we'll see we'll see we'll see hope you guys enjoyed my takes on the more interview and hope you guys have a great night or day peace from quiz of the games everybody